Today we're going to do a quick recap of the week that we just passed. And uh, afterwards we have time for some more advanced questions and maybe also some showcasing of Kupla if there is any interest in the audience. So uh, on the first day, we uh, looked at Alpaca from a very high level point of view. Uh, we've learned that Alpaca is a C++ header only library, which means that there are no bindings for C or Fortran, for example. Um, Alpaca is also an abstraction library for parallel programming, which enables you as the user to write uh, one code and run it on both CPUs and GPUs. Alpaca follows the single source uh, coding style, so there is no separation between kernel code and the uh, rest of the program. And Alpaca supports different backends for CPU and GPU programming. It also supports many modern compilers. And uh, because of Alpaca's uh, of the transformation of Alpaca kernels into native kernels, Alpaca also supports different ecosystems meaning that you can profile Alpaca code with the native tools of the vendors. For example, you can use the NVIDIA profiler to profile uh, Alpaca pro programs that run on CUDA, and you can use VTune from Intel to profile Alpaca code running on CPUs. And also Alpaca is portable across operating systems, meaning Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. We have a GitHub organization, and if you want to uh, participate, we'd be ha happy if you could, uh, if you would stay in touch with us. We are always looking for new um, collaborators on improving Alpaca further. The uh, project itself is a sub-project of this group, and you can also find uh, the slides of the workshop and the accompanying examples in this group. If you should decide to use Alpaca and use it in your research, we'd also be happy if you could cite us. We are, I have three uh, publications here, and if you could cite one of them, we would, we would be very happy. So the idea of Alpaca is to write algorithms once and run them everywhere. The decision on the target platform is made by the programmer at compile time. In general case, the kernels are hardware agnostic and should be written as such. However, if you really need it, kernels can also be specialized for a concrete device or a concrete backend. The data parallelism in Apaka is achieved through a hierarchy of parallel threads. We've seen that our typical development workflow is based on Git and CMAC 3.15, and that Apaka has no core dependencies besides Boost. However, depending on your backend, you may have to install additional dependencies, for example, the CUDA toolkit or the ROGRAM toolkit. Alpaca examples and test cases are part of the source tree, and Alpaca can be installed to a location of your choice. That were the contents of day one. Now we're going to look at day two. Uh, and on Tuesday, we had a look at the Hello World example. And we've seen how we can spawn a user-defined number of threads, and that these threads may run in parallel. However, the order of execution and also the access to shared resources is unspecified. Alpaca threads execute the kernels, and the threads are mapped to cores. A set of cores is called a device, and multiple devices are attached to exactly one host. The kernel you have written contains the algorithm. The, uh, the algorithm is typically written on a per data element basis. And in Alpaca, kernels have to be functors, meaning executable C++ structs or classes. You have to implement uh, the, uh, this operator here. And this operator must be annotated with uh, the Alpaca function accelerator uh, specifier. The operator must return void. There are no return types from a kernel. And it also must be const, meaning this operator can't uh, modify any members of the kernel itself. Uh, and the thread applies the kernel to a data element. The number of threads needs to fit the problem size. As a good rule of thumb, to start programming, you should spawn one thread per element, and you should also have more threads than you have cores. But don't launch too many threads. It depends on your hardware and what too many exactly means, because shared resources are scarce 
and you have to uh, the more threads you spawn the more bottlenecks you create when accessing shared resources in our example we had the io buffer for example where multiple threads have to be serialized so that they don't produce gibberish on the output buffer all threads form a grid and a grid is divided into blocks of equal size uh, the blocks have access to low latency shared memory and also thread synchronization. So you can synchronize across the whole grid, but you can synchronize the threads inside of a block. Grids and blocks can be laid out in a 1D, 2D, or 3D fashion. And through the Apaca API, you have access to grid mitigation. So you can identify your thread on the grid and also inside a block. Those were the contents of Tuesday. Now on Wednesday, we expanded on that. And we looked at uh, the web division and multiple dimensions. Uh, we have seen the API functions for obtaining indices and extents. We've seen how we can also calculate our own indices if needed. But you also have to be, uh, be aware of index reordering. So uh, uh, it's a bit counterintuitive, uh, counterintuitive but it matches the uh, C multidimensional array that if you have multiple dimensions, the last dimension comes first. So uh, in a 2D grid, for example, you would first index the Y index and then the X index. We've also uh, had an example there uh, in which we computed pi. We've seen that kernels accept three different kinds of parameters. The accelerator parameter, pointers to device memory, and scalar values of trivially copyable types. We've seen how buffer iteration can be done in Alpaca, either through loops or through thread parallelism or a combination of both, depending on your needs. The Alpaca accelerator provides math functions, and uh, you should also launch one thread per element, but this is not always ideal, so you have to launch as many threads as is suitable for your, uh, for your uh, problem. You can calculate the whole number of threads on your grid through this formula. You just uh, multiply the blocks that are on the grid uh, with the threads that are in the block. And this gives you the overall number of threads in the grid. A multidimensional grid consists of all threads uh, that are running a kernel. And each thread has a unique grid index. This index is accessible through Alpaca's API. Uh, threads are grouped into blocks of equal size, and each thread also has a unique block local index, which is also accessible through Alpaca's API. Threads inside the blocks have access to fast or low latency shared memory and block-wide synchronization. Now, yesterday, we uh, have seen how we can exploit uh, our, the whole hardware at our disp uh, disposal. So we have seen how we can change accelerators just by changing a simple type def. We've seen that we uh, also may need to adapt the work division, meaning the number of threads, depending on the new hardware type we're using. Uh, Apaka comes with a set of predefined accelerators for CPUs and GPUs, a CUDA accelerator, a HIP accelerator, OpenMP accelerator, threading building blocks, and so on. These hardware and platform specific details are abstracted away by the accelerator. And inside the kernel, the accelerator contains the thread state and also gives you access to Alpaca's device side API. On the host, the accelerator is a meter parameter for choosing the correct physical devices and also all the dependent types like the uh, Alpaca device and the queue. Alpaca devices, on the other hand, represent physical devices and they are dependent on, your, on the programmer's accelerator choice. This means that only compatible devices are detected by Alpaca. And uh, Alpaca devices enable physical device management and information. So they give uh, functionality to the host side. Queues are used for the communication between a host and the device. They provide management for device head operations like uh, spawning, uh, launching kernels or memory operations like a mem copy or a mem set. And queues can either be, be blocking or non-blocking. Uh, blocking queues block the calling thread until the operation has returned. And in the non-blocking case, it just returns immediately and the uh, queued operation will run asynchronously with regard to the host. And queues also have different means of synchronization. You can either wait for the queue, which will block the calling thread. 
you can uh, let a queue wait on an event, or you can let a, let a queue wait for another queue. And we've seen uh, the platform concept, which is a union of accelerator, device, and kernel. And through the platform concept, which is more of a meter concept, so there's no actual type in Alpaca, uh, the portability is achieved. As a user, you shouldn't make any assumptions about your device type in the kernel, because this is the job of the accelerator. At compile time, the accelerator will boil down to something platform specific, for example, something from CUDA or something from HIP or something from OpenMP. And this will then uh, adjust your kernel accordingly to the target platform. However, on, your, on the host side, you should know your device type and adapt the work division, for example. And if you use multiple accelerators at once in your program, you can fully utilize any or most heterogeneous systems that are out there. 